Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're continuing to investigate optimal rebalancing techniques for portfolio management. And unlike in the previous video, where we studied how often should you rebalance the portfolio, so optimal rebalancing frequency, should you rebalance every day, every week, every month, every quarter, and so on, we actually look at what is happening at the market during our investment horizon, during the time that we hold our portfolio, and incorporate that into our rebalancing decisions. Because sometimes the uh, market might be so volatile that your uh, portfolio holdings would deviate from the target allocation, from the target weights you would like to maintain so far that you might want to rebalance more frequently. And sometimes the market is pretty calm and you could do away without rebalancing so frequently, even if a substantial amount of time has passed. This technique is uh, most fruitfully implemented in the so-called rebalancing bands or tolerance bands approach that many traders and portfolio managers favor. And today we'll implement that in Excel and show how to make your head around it, how to simulate it in Excel and uh, how to interpret the results obtained. First, we have got a portfolio of five stocks. Again, a very simple one. You can quite easily uh, generalize it to as many stocks or as many assets in general uh, as you want. But we'll start with an equally weighted 20% each five stock portfolio and check that the weights sum up to 100. And indeed they do. We'll start with investing 100 uh, at December end 2011 and invest for 10 years. Uh, at the start, our positions can be calculated as the portfolio value with the column locked times the respective target weights. That's when we start investing and monitoring what's going on with those positions. And we can also input our tolerance band uh, in this case. And again, this is the maximum percentage that any position is allowed to deviate from the target. And if we input something like 5%, that would mean that we allow uh, each of the weights to be as high as 25% or as low as 15% but not beyond that. If any position goes above 25% or below 15% in terms of the overall portfolio value uh, relative to the portfolio value in this particular time period, we immediately rebalance uh, to restore the initial target allocation. So 20% each in this case. So now what I'll do is I'll implement the deviation procedure. What we'll do is we calculate the maximum of the absolute deviations of our current weights, so positions divided by the portfolio value at this particular point in time, minus the target. And the target is this row that so will stay the same, so it needs to be locked uh, despite time passing, because this target allocation is what we seek to maintain throughout our investment period. And we enforce this formula, and, it, and it quite expected there, the deviation at the start is zero, because we literally enforced our target allocation just now. And then we have to incorporate the fact whether we exceeded our tolerance band, our rebalancing band, and rebalance in that case, and stick with the uh, existing positions if we haven't, if we haven't violated it, and we can allow the portfolio to fluctuate further. So if our deviation, and we need to lock the column here, as that would be uh, applicable to all of our positions, is lower, than the tolerance band, and we need to lock that both row and column wise, then we can stick with the existing location. So refer to the existing position value, but if not, we have to rebalance to restore our target weights. So we multiply the existing portfolio value, locking the column by the target weight, locking the row. And this simple formula allows us to dynamically rebalance no matter what's happening, no matter whether we violate our band or not. And we can also calculate the trading volume to incorporate the fee element to our uh, portfolio uh, simulation considerations. 
which would be the sum of absolute changes in relative positions. So rebalance positions divided by our starting portfolio value minus the positions themselves that we started with divided by the portfolio value. So here, as we didn't rebalance, this trading volume is 0%, quite intuitively. And what we can do next is we can assume a trading fee, for example, 1%, and uh, start simulating uh, our portfolio management um, decisions next. First of all, every single day, we need to see how the value of our holdings change. So we multiply rebalanced positions from uh, previous day by the new value of the price or total return index and divided by the old value for each of the stocks or assets in general. And we can calculate the portfolio value by summing up our new positions. And the beauty of this approach is that we can drag the rebalancing calculator below and uh, automatically determine whether we should rebalance and do so if we should. Here, our deviation is 0.42%, so it's not uh, exceeding our tolerance band. So it means that we stick with our allocation and we do not rebalance after our first uh, trading day. And now we can calculate our gross and net returns. So for the gross return, we divide gross portfolio value today by the gross portfolio value yesterday and subtract one. And for the net return, we implement the fees based on the trading volume. So one plus gross return, times one minus trading volume times the fee and the fee needs to be locked minus one here as we have not rebalanced our gross and net returns are the same and we can simply bottom right click it all the way down to implement our rebalancing throughout the sample we see how a deviation is slowly creeping up as time goes on and eventually uh in April 2012, so around three to four months uh, into our uh, portfolio management, we exceed 5%, uh, trading around 15% of our portfolio to restore the initial allocation. So we move from that allocation uh, that is dominated by Apple to an equal allocation, uh, back restoring the target weights, and we are back to where we started. And then it's not until june where we have to rebalance again and here we can count how often did we have to rebalance so we can count if the positive trading volumes in this column we can see that we rebalanced 14 times so as we uh, invested for 10 years that would mean well around uh, one to two rebalancings per year which is quite passive as portfolios go in terms of uh, our Portfolio performance statistics, we can calculate the gross return using product one plus our gross returns over here. We need to annualize it, so we raise it to the power of 252. We draw 252 trading days in a year over 2517, which is the uh, sample size, how many trading days we've got in the sample, minus one. That gives us a gross return of 17.51%. For the net return, we can simply copy this formula and change the cell references. So here, we just refer to the net return now, and we see that uh, the impact of fees is, well, um, sizable, but not necessarily that material, only 21 basis points in terms of annualized returns, as we rebalanced quite unfrequently. And for the risk, we can calculate the sample standard deviation of gross returns, times it by the square root of 252 to annualize, and get 18.75%. Now we need to assume the risk for rate to calculate the Sharpe ratio. The risk for rate that is uh, adequate uh, nowadays is around 4%. So we can calculate the Sharpe ratio by um, figuring out the excess return first, net return minus risk-free, divided by risk as volatility. And we get a Sharpe ratio of around 0.71. And now we can uh, do some scenario analysis and see which tolerance band would be optimal for this particular portfolio, for this particular 10 year period. So first, if the tolerance band is zero, we have got effectively a fixed weight portfolio where we rebalance every single day because every single day there are some deviations from uh, absolute um, parity in terms of positions. So exactly, we rebalance 2517 times 
and our net return takes a quite big hit due to the fact that we rebalance a lot and we spend quite a lot on fees. So this particular spread between gross and net return, the impact of fees is in excess of two percentage points per year, which is definitely very uh, substantial. And our sharp ratio is reduced to 0 0.59. If we uh, increase our tolerance band, we can see that it makes our rebalancing a little bit less frequent. And again, if we uh, increase our tolerance band to 1%, we only rebalance around 25 times a year, so around once every two weeks. Our sharp ratio uh, does enjoy this change quite a bit. Increasing it further does further improve our sharp ratio due to the reduction in fees. As we go further and further on, we can see that around 4% we actually have got the highest sharp ratio that we've seen so far. This rebalancing, once every uh, half a year uh, on average, so uh, 22 rebalancings in 10 years, leads us to achieve the highest sharp ratio in terms of, well, you've got a lower sharp ratio if you go for a lower tolerance band, and you've got a lower sharp ratio if you go for a higher tolerance band. So if you return back to 4%, you'll get an optimal uh, solution. Again, we eyeballed it. You can uh, use optimization techniques to achieve the uh, optimal tolerance band. Again, due to the fact that uh, this particular uh, procedure is not smooth, uh, numerical optimization here could behave quite uh, inefficiently. But what you could also use is consider different uh, target allocations and see whether the optimal uh, portfolio of weights that you've calculated before impact how frequently should you rebalance such an allocation and that's all there is with regards to the application of rebalancing bands or tolerance bands for rebalancing frequency uh, please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful in the comments below i'm into any further suggestions for videos business finance or economics would like to record and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel local city supports on patreon thank you very much and stay tuned